Reaction right now from Dr. Sudeep Bose, the professor at Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center, a center I should say, much, much more. Um, doctor, always good to have you back and help us through all of this. What do you uh, make Thanks, yeah. right now of these findings, doctor, that 93, 94 uh, percent of the fatalities we've seen, the ca cases that have gotten as extreme as we've seen, are older folks? I mean, I, I, I would imagine in a majority, but that's, that's a lot. That is a lot. And, you know, I would say the main message for that from what I'm seeing with patients in the emergency room is even if you are younger and you don't have comorbidities, you don't want to get this. It's still pretty miserable. And there are people reporting symptoms that last weeks. And it's basically numbers, right? I mean, if you look at, we have 330-ish million people in the United States. And if this runs through and we say, hey, only, you know, elderly people are affected, so we start letting our guard down, for us to get right. this behind us and get herd immunity, the mathematical models are saying about 65% of people need to be infected. So let's do the math, 330 million in the United States to reach that 65%. We're talking 200 million people infected. If the mortality is around 1%, which is kind of what we're seeing, that's 2 million people who will die from this. And many of those won't be people with comorbidities. So I think we still have to keep our guard up and basically find the best of both worlds and keep those uh, precautions so that we can kind of limit the infection, yet go on with our lives the best we can. But you know, doctor, um, and I know you used to the, the staggeringly simplistic questions I ask you, but this thing is so contagious, right? I mean, uh, you know, hundreds gathered at campground in New Jersey, hundreds get the virus. Um, uh, you know, a couple of dozen kids at University of Alabama contract the virus. It's now over 1,200 there as we speak. What is it about this? that unlike at least uh, others I've seen in the past, this thing, people get together, boom. It doesn't matter whether they're at their a bar off campus or anything, that, that obviously heightens the risk, but, but it, it just seems people gather, disease cases spike. Right, and that's the characteristic of the virus, actually. I mean, there's, in 2007, actually, in Hong Kong, there was a bird flu, it was an H5N1, and the mortality from that, so imagine Hong Kong, people close to these bird cages are getting it. The mortality from that was like 60 some percent from reports. Wow. So thankfully that one was not person to person and it just kind of fizzled out. This one, thank God, is not you know that high of a mortality, but it's a lot higher than the flu. And the characteristics of this virus is it does spread more person to person. That's discover, you can look up a number called R naught, it's R with a little zero, and they actually mathematically put how much the spread is. They're thinking this has an R naught of four, meaning each person will spread it to about four people, and they spread it to four, and they spread it to four. And there are other viruses like measles that are a lot higher. I mean, you walk into a room with someone with measles, you know, three hours ago who was in that room, chances are you'll get it. So, you know, you got to work with what we have as far as the transmissibility of this and the mortality of this and what we can do. The power is with us, like following the rules and not letting our guard down quite yet, but trying to go on with our lives. We're going to still be dealing with this a year from now, aren't we? I think so. I mean, if you look at how these pandemics end, there's one of few ways. So. You look at like bubonic plague and uh, SARS, even in 2003, which was a coronavirus, it just kind of fizzled out. It went away. We don't quite know why on all those. Other pandemics like smallpox, there's a vaccine, we eradicated smallpox. HIV, we're 35 years in and we still don't have a vaccine, but we've defeated it with medications. Now you die often of uh, with HIV instead of dying from HIV. And then 1918 flu, we basically said, hey, we got to go on with our lives. The flu still exists. 
and we got a grip on it that way. So I suspect this is going to be a combination of it fizzling out a little bit, becoming, we're seeing the mortality decrease a bit along with the vaccine. And we can hit that magic, you know, 65% herd immunity number. It's around there, we think, and hopefully get this under control. Doctor, you're so good. You know, you can put this in perspective. I very much appreciate that. Thank you very, very much. Very good seeing you again. Be safe, be well.